Pef, Commissar Popi Mailula, and immediately next to her, on her left, is the Secretary General, Commissar Marshal Jamini. On my immediate left is the Deputy President of the EFF, Floyd Shivambu, and on my right is the President and Commander-in-Chief who will take us through today, Julius Malem. President. Thank you very much, uh, Commissar Nao Tambo, the spokesperson of the EFF, the officials of the EFF, members of the media and the people of South Africa. The Economic Freedom Fighters held its 19th Central Command Team meeting in Kuruleni from the 12th to the 14th of May 2023. The meeting received political and organizational report and made extensive reflection on all issues confronting the South African society. The year 2023 marks 10 years since the formation of the Economic Freedom Fighters, marking 10 years of unbroken struggle of the only weapon in the hands of the oppressed, exploited, and dejected masses of our people. The EFF Central Command team reflected on the progress of all preparations towards the 10th year anniversary, which will be held at the FNB Stadium on the 29th of July, 2023, and will be a red festival of the poor that will be remembered by history. The 19th CCT is the first Central Command Team meeting of the EFF since we have assumed serious and significant responsibility in government. When the EFF was founded 10 years ago, we said we are government in waiting. We are here today and boldly can say we are playing important government roles in the city of Johannesburg, city of Ikurleni, Etequini Metropolitan Municipality, Western District Municipality, and Mogali City Local Municipality. Our principle in government is that we are there to service the interest of the people. We remind all our public representatives that no EFF member of the mayoral committee and no EFF speaker of the municipality is permitted to hold secret meetings with business people and service providers to the municipality. Anyone found to be meeting with business people and service providers will be immediately removed from their positions of responsibility. Business people and service providers know the channels through which they must interact with government leaders and it should never be in secret meetings. Our participation in government should lead to the insourcing of workers, creation of jobs, fighting corruption, and must also lead to the resolving the electricity crisis through several interventions which our sphere of government are allowed to do so. The EFF's approach to government and government governance is not the same as all other political parties because our people are a priority of all we seek to achieve. We will demonstrate to our people that we are a capable political party that will provide a clean and transparent The EFF noted the successful launch of the 10th celebrations, which started with the media launch held on the 28th of February 2023 at the Constitutional Hill in Johannesburg. The media launch exhibited 10 years of existence of the EFF as years of building a vanguard movement steeped in the Ten celebration with the children of Elkana Child Care Center in the West. The EFF will host will host EFF ten, ten celebrations in each province. The elderly as a way to symbolize our respect for past generation and our faith in the future, which has been abandoned. We appreciate the. because questions to the EFF are directed towards the maximal benefits of ordinary South Africans. Even before we are government, 
We as the EFF have utilized our internal resources to build homes for the homeless poor people, to refurbish and early childhood development centers, to clean our communities and to fund education for young people. Donations to the EFF are also a means to protect the organization from opportunistic donors who will use their money to influence the organization towards a wrong direction and agenda. We extend our gratitude and our appreciation to South Africans who are donating money through online donations of 10 rand, 20 rand, 30 rand, and other amounts. And also appreciate the people who are donating groceries and cows towards the 10th anniversary celebration. We received 45 cows and will consolidate and declare all the monetary contributions and donations we received from ordinary people. As has been the demonstration in the less than one percent of private political party donations. and music, and a close relationship between arts and revolution. The State Theatre in Tswani, since its opening Friday, the 12th, and will be going to location Africa. The EFF Central Command Team of the organization is celebrating and marking its 10th anniversary through activities that rise that raise the consciousness of our people and moving away from the culture of large display of wealth and the abuse of alcohol and young women as objects arts and revolution are almost always mutually reinforcing and we thank commissar fanamukwena and the brilliant team of actors and actresses that are playing a leading role in the rule the EFF Central Command Team further welcomed the progress and efforts made towards the program of massive political education and voter registration as the year 2023 was marked as the year of these programs. The CCT recommitted itself to maximum focus to ensure that these programs do not end up as activities the organization speaks to itself, but must raise the levels of consciousness of society and position the EFF as a leader of the organized revolution. The Central Command Team reflected on the 30 by-elections that the organization contested in the, previous, in the period under review and welcomed the decisive victory in the Free State, the Tlabe Municipality, Ward 17. However, the CCT noted the unsatisfactory performance where the organization registered a decline in the Eastern Cape, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, Mpumalanga, and the Northern Cape. As a result, the CCT resolved to apply itself maximally to all by elections and aim for complete victory. As anything other than growth and victory for the EFF will be treated as a failure and counter-revolutionary. This applies to by elections that are taking place in Ikuruleni, Lesedi, Etequini, Mandeni, and Umzumkulu. Now on the 24th of May 2023, and all by elections that will follow thereafter on the 14th and the 28th of June and the 19th of July 2023. The EFF Central Command Team welcomed the dedication and commitment demonstrated by fighters and ground forces in the manner in which they have executed the Andris Tatane cleanup campaign. This campaign carried out in honor of Andris Tatan, who was killed by the police fighting for service delivery, has thus far demonstrated that our people are not subhuman who want to live with rubbish 
at their doorstep, but long for support and resources to keep their communities clean. The EFF Central Command Team welcomed the participation of all residents who joined the Andris Tatani cleanup campaign. The CCT further welcomed the contribution by the business community who, out of their goodwill, availed resources to support the cleaning campaign. The EFF calls on all residents to join the Andris Tatani cleanup campaign every Saturday and also calls on all municipal caucuses to adopt motions tabled by the EFF caucuses for cleaning campaigns. We call on all we call on everyone to buy dinner tables on the 10th anniversary gala dinner which will take place on the 27th of July 2023. No one should avoid associating with the EFF and no one must be intimidated by the dying organization because in its tenth, 10 years of existence, the EFF has had to deal with the arrogance of a dying organization with, in, which, immediate people from, uh, which intimidated people from associating with the EFF. As we mark 10 years of service to the principle embodied by our founding manifesto, the EFF Central Command team noted with concern, public representatives in parliament, provincial legislatures, and municipal councils, as the impact on governance is not as impactful as it was once was. The CCT resolved to hold public representatives accountable for what they do on daily basis to impact the lives of our people, both in the corridors of government and in our communities. This means we want verifiable reports of schools, clinics which public representatives have adopted, and informal settlements that they have adopted, reports of insourcing motions that they have tabled in their municipal councils, community meetings they have held to give reports and take mandate as servants of the people, and we want to see them. must establish a dedicated portfolio or a standing committee to oversee the presidents and the presidency as a whole. The president has centralized a lot of functions in his office, and there is no dedicated oversight of the work he does. It is therefore long overdue that a separate committee must be established to oversee the president, and that does not require, and that does not require a study tour uh, to determine. There is absolutely no need to take a study tour to Britain to study how a president must be held accountable. The EFF Central Command team noted with extreme concern of the governing party a solution to address ongoing and escalating electricity blackouts. The EFF was vindicated because it is now accepted that it was a premature decision to close coal power stations or abandoning coal as central to the generation of electricity in South Africa. The loans to abandon coal were optimistic and driven by the interference by imperialist forces who want to micromanage South Africa's in an effort to fight crime that continues to spiral out of control. The EFF has made proposals, and this includes, among other things, repair existing fleet of power generation and invest in clean coal technologies to increase the energy availability factor. Invest in additional generation into the transmission grid pursue of grid households and institutionalized solutions, i.e. embedded generation, decrease the usage demand of mega electricity users, invest in the transmission capacity, invest in and participate in the industrial and manufacturing capacity for embedded generation or of grid solution. We are 100 percent convinced that if South Africa were to source the expertise from our BRICS partners,
particularly the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation, we will be able to provide electricity to our people. China and Russia have massive experience in electricity generation, transmission and distribution, and should therefore be our first point of call. There are additional capable South Africans who can bring stability to ESCOM, but they are being unfairly and irrationally persecuted in the name of the so-called state capture. There are several solutions that can be implemented at, at global, continental, and subcontinental, national, and these are medium and short-term solutions. The global cooperation long-term solution will be to give Russia Federation's Rosatom a sensible power purchase agreement to build a nuclear power plant which can produce a minimum of 3,000 megawatts and a maximum of 6,000 megawatts on a basis of a 20-year-long build-operate-transfer BOT contracts. The continental long-term solution include investing in and completion of Inga Dam hydroelectric project in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The subcontinental medium-term solution include investing in neighboring countries' electricity capacity, such as investing in phase two of Kaora Basa hydroelectric power generation in Mozambique and other sources of electricity in the SADC region and within the South Southern African power pool. The to short-term solution will be to purchase electricity surpluses from the neighboring countries, particularly Mozambique. The most immediate solution to the crisis of electricity in South Africa we know for a fact that the reason car power ship is not plugged into the grid despite being approved and despite the environmental concerns being dismissed is due to the fact that politicians from the ruling party are negotiating for bribes that must be paid to them. How on earth does anyone threaten the entire economy and livelihoods of millions of our people because they are demanding a bribe? Whilst the EFF Central Command team viewed the proposed solutions as most suitable, practical and implementable, we are fully aware that the government has no interest in resolving this crisis and as a result, we may experience a complete grid collapse where South Africa will be plunged into darkness for days, weeks and possibly months. We reiterate our call that Mr. Sir Ramaphosa must step down as South Africa's president due to his repeated and persistent failures on everything. Our country is collapsing and a grid collapse will lead to the disruption of water supply, disruption of network connectivity, and high levels of crime and looting. Ramaphosa must therefore step down with immediate effect to avoid massive insurrection and chaos which will occur when there is a total grid collapse. Ramaphosa must step down with immediate effect. The Central Command team noted the continued aggression of NATO, backed by the United States of America, who want to dictate the world who everyone should love or hate, and who should be declared enemy, and who should be declared a friend. While we are aware of the inability of the South African government to provide any meaningful arms to support Russia, we know that the United States of America is leading a global campaign to isolate and tarnish Russia's image. The U.S. is amongst, other th is amongst other things using the ICC as an instrument to pursue narrow political agendas. It is clear that the USA seeks the destruction of Russia and has no interest in a peaceful resolution to the conflict. They preach a non-alignment when they are spreading billions of dollars to support Ukraine with military equipment. We, as the EFF, will be introducing a private member bill in Parliament 
to effect the withdrawal of South Africa from the International Criminal Court, which has thus far proven to be a biased instrument of global imperialism. The ICC did not do anything against the former U.S. President George Bush for the wars in Iraq and turned a blind eye when Barack Obama and NATO illegally invaded Libya to assassinate brother leader Mahoma Gaddafi. South Africa and all African countries must withdraw from the ICC and the EFF will lead that effort. We therefore call on all BRICS members to strengthen their unity and maximally support Russia to defend itself. This position also goes to show that as Africans, we cannot take a non-aligned and neutrality as the continuing conflict, such as the recent conflict in Sudan, have demonstrated that there are a proxy wars taking place. We cannot be threatened by disinvestment or trade relations at the expense of our right to determine our own foreign policy. We, as the EFF, also support the de-dollarization of the global economy. The senseless usage of the U.S. dollar as the primary currency of exchange in the global economy has been largely abused by successive American governments. The world, particularly the global south, must expedite the de-dollarization of the global economy and South Africa must purposefully be on the forefront of this progressive global transition from American undue and un unjustified hegemony. The EFF Central Command team reiterate its call for meaningful support and solidarity of all oppressed nations, particularly to the people of Palestine, whose children continue to be killed in places of worship, and their land is annexed by the apartheid Israel. The Palestinians are tired of messages of solidarity to protect themselves. In conclusion, the EFF Central Command team noted the continued deterioration of the economic situations, the levels of unemployment, and the mismanagement of the economy poses a threat to the South Africa's sovereignty. People are losing homes and livelihoods because of failed fiscal and austerity of all other nations' interests, including the last people. Crime in South Africa is one of the leading problems confronting our people. And as much as we may be opposed to the deployment of the army as it is, a proven failed strategy. We need a solution to the crisis of crime. Gender-based violence continue to eat into the fabric of our society with no end in sight as women are slaughtered every day. The sitting government has no solution to the crises of crime. The central command team must ensure that the EFF as the only weapon in the hands of the masses of our people is at all material times at the forefront and the last line of defense to this attack. As we move towards the 29th of July, 2023, weekends are strictly for engagements with our people and no internal meetings will sit on days when we know we have an obligation to interact with our communities. We need to balance the internal meetings and constant interaction with our communities and people. Let us consolidate the ground for a socialist future. The EFF is turning 10 years old. We must re-energize and refocus as we are no longer the government in waiting, but we are the government of our people, and we are the government our people deserve. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Commander-in-Chief. We will now take the first round of questions from members of the meeting. So we'll take five hands. You'll be number one, you'll be number two, you'll be number three, uh, Kevin, you'll be number four. Uh, number one. It's Sandra uh, Zonetonje from Eyewitness News. Just have a couple of uh, questions. The first one is with regards to the issue of service providers, uh, uh, you may co 
your members, meeting with service providers. Uh, I hear you said meeting in secret. That is what you would uh, take uh, 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 issue with. Um, there was uh, a meeting in a guru where your, MMC, your MMC met in public. So are you saying that that is okay? Um, the other one, um, some of the proposals that the EFF makes on the electricity uh, situation are in line with what the electricity minister has said. Um, and, and some of them, I, and, and I, I mentioned the word some, <laughs> Deputy President. Are you then in support of uh, the proposal to say he must be empowered uh, with uh, certain powers to ensure that he deals with uh, the electricity crisis? How soon then uh, do you want to bring the private members bill? And my last one is on uh, the, uh, I heard you mentioning that uh, South Africa does not have the capacity to even supply arms to Russia. Uh, your views on what then the ambassador of the United States said on uh, the United States to South Africa said on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number two. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> my name is Luna from the Citizen. Uh, number one, um, see, as we hear you say that there are other people from the school who are being persecuted. That's the reason that some of the issues are not being dealt with. Do you support um, the reinstatement of people like Machela Koko and uh, Brian Mulefe? And also, what do you make of um, uh, the Andre Carita's book that uh, uh, the Minister of Public Enterprise, <coughs> Mr. Pravin Kodan, is the reason why things are not going so well in uh, ESCO? And la lastly, is just on, on the fact that uh, what happens if indeed the intelligence that the USA say they did get up about uh, SA say, uh, selling their weapons to, to Russia, what happens if they come out? Number three. Um, thank you, Junior Kumar from News24. Um, I think it's partly one of the questions is partly covered. Uh, it was with regards to the Mr. Malema saying that there are certain people with expertise but are being persecuted in the name of state capture that could be utilized in um, stabilizing ESCO. Uh, could you please tell us which uh, who are these people? Um, and the, the second question is. How would you char characterize the relationship between um, the ANC and the EFF in Egorulen? Because it seems like there's some breakdown in, in relations there. Also, uh, the ANC recently adopted uh, a policy framework uh, in terms of uh, coalition, entering into coalitions, and they had discussed that uh, they would want to engage leaders from other political parties. Has the ANC engaged the EFF? Thank you, number four. Good afternoon, my name is Govan Wittles from uh, Newsroom Africa. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Malema, does the meeting by Mr. Dunga in the Kululeni qualify as a secret meeting? You said you would remove people if they did, uh, would you be removing him? Secondly, has the CCT reflected on what the ANC said would be a formation of a coalition political council at provincial level to resolve disputes? in the governments of local unity, has, have, have those discussions started at all? And then, what is unsatisfactory about the conduct of MPs, MPLs, and members of the EFF in councils, according to the CCT, and, and what should be done about them? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President. It's all to held in open um, and people are called according to um, the database of uh, the municipality. Um, the story has been um, um, people are not being paid in Ikurulin and that people are paid through surnames and that people are paid by paying a bribe to be paid. 
and uh, Dunga called th that meeting to hear everybody out in the presence of the officials where a real case is being made. A person is referred to the relevant table and uh, a decision is made there and there that this matter must be resolved. Um, and a report we received over the weekend is that a lot more other people uh, have been paid following that intervention by our MMC, uh, irrespective of who they are uh, and all of that. It is those type of meetings we need uh, from our public representatives where they are transparent about what they are doing. Um, they said trucks were missing. They went to look for the trucks. Um, they didn't find the trucks. So they've got an inventory that says these are the trucks that are here. Then they said, call all of, all of them into one place. And then they found uh, incomplete tracks. And then they say they are going to open a case. I don't know, DP, if they've opened a case. Um, uh, they're going to open a case and all of that. The immediate government that left there is the DA. So you would expect the DA to be the suspect because they should have seen that the tracks are missing or they just simply didn't have interest or anything of that sort. In its typical nature, the ANC is the first one to jump and say there are no, tra there are no tracks missing, there are no tracks missing. Not because when you utter the word, the first one to because as Africans, we've got more than one name. So the ANC has got two names. It's ANC, the other name is corruption. So when you say corruption, you are calling them. That's why they respond. Where did they come in? They are not the immediate government. We are trying to demonstrate to all uh, doomsayers that the way the DA governs, governs better is not true. The drugs got missing under the DA. Who responds? The corrupt. The corrupt one says, no, the, the, there are no drugs missing here. Well, Instead of joining the EFF to look for the trucks, because we know the people who are using those trucks are black Africans in the townships. Without those trucks, there won't be service delivery to our people. No, they defend corruption. So we can't allow that. We are not in any coalition with the ANC. Someone says the relationship is uh, somehow... A deteriorated or any there's never been any relationship we have never had a relationship with the ANC nothing we from time to time like we are going to do even when we are in government if the DA puts a good motion that is in the interest of our people will vote for it we don't owe our allegiance to anyone we are independent we are not in a coalition with the ANC. Now, the South African media has been trying to coerce this narrative that we are in coalition with the ANC. We are not. And if you want to challenge me, produce a proof now. I will resign with immediate effect. We have no, no coalition with the ANC. Nothing. If the ANC comes and says, Let's remove this mayor of a DA and we we'll agree with them. We remove that mayor of the DA. Then the ANC comes and says, let's vote for this one as a mayor. We vote for that one as a mayor. But we have never made a mistake of voting for them. So what type of a coalition partner is this one who doesn't vote for you? So in Mangawu, recently, we went to remove... Uh, the DA, and then the ANC put a candidate, we voted against the ANC candidate in Mangawu. So which coalition are you talking about? In, in Fuleni, we are going to vote against an ANC mayor because that uh, city is, is, is rotten. If you want to see the, uh, the typical ANC-led government which is obsessed with self and has lost interest of the people, go to Infulin. We can't have an ANC mayor in, in Infulin. No. 
if you want to rescue that place, let's go and remove the Mfuleni mayor of the ANC. Because we are not in coalition with the ANC. We are not in discussion with the ANC about anything. Anything. So, actually, Mbalula issued an instruction to the Free State that they must never talk to the EFF. Yeah, because here in uh, Metimaulu, we want to remove the mayor of the DA. Mbalula said, no, they must not talk to the EFF in the whole of Free State. But a mayor, a, an incompetent mayor of the DA can easily be removed here uh, in uh, Metimaulu and uh, a progressive mayor who will put a, a government of national unity at a, a local level can be elected. That's how much we are not in talks with the ANC. We are, so so uh, uh, we, 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 we really shouldn't be even saying the EFF is going to talk to the ANC. We are not. We are not in alliance with the ANC. Um, um, uh, if there is any corruption that is going to happen in Igurlen, or any corruption that is going to happen in, a, in a Johannesburg, or Mogali City, or Western, we will expose a fellow MMC. We will expose, we will open, we'll talk open, less if we are not in an MMC position. We are not in an MMC arrangement of corruption. We are not. That's why we can speak openly in Ikurlin as MMCs of the wrong things that are happening there. Anywhere, and that's what the ANC must get used to, we will not conceal corruption in the name of we are all MMCs. No. Don't steal. Deliver to our people. Then you will have peace. The corrupt ANC uh, of Ikurlini, Jongezizwe, is is always is is a lake of Muzwandile Masina, and then he is suffering from uh, Muzwandile Masina's uh, bitterness. So, Jonga Zizo has, has joined Masina. It's no longer Masina; it's Masina, Masina, Uta Masina, Masina. Yeah? There is a faction there of the ANC in Ikurlini called Masina. Fiction, which messes up everything. If it's not Muzwandile eating, no one is going to eat. We are going to put soil in this plate. So the Masinia faction is the one that is corrupt and that is very scared of the EFF, which is going to expose uh, corruption. Even that ANC resolution of uh, when you are in majority, you must be the mayor. You have not won the election. But it's a Masinia proposal, if you remember. Now that he has found his way into the NEC, he went to put that Masinia proposal in the NEC, and they foolishly adopted it. Who's going to vote for you? Because you are making the same mistake the DA is making. No one is going to vote for you. The coalition politics should be and a position that should be taken is go and persuade and be persuaded. Not, no. Anywhere where you got the majority you must go in. That majority you got is not an indication that the people want you. The indication that the people want to is a decisive majority. 50% plus one. If you didn't receive that, you can't say arrogantly alone. No, everywhere where we've got a majority, uh, uh, we must be a mayor. It's an arrogant position that will leave you in the cold. But Muzwandile Masinya is the one that has been advocating for that position. They must look at where Masinya is. Muzwandile Masinya. And that's where the ANC is going. They are going to the cold where Masinya is. If they are going to follow Masinya coalition, uh, ideology. The private, well, we don't support anything of a minister of electricity. He, didn't, he never said anything that we said here. He will never come close to thinking like this. 
um, uh, Sputa is corrupt. He collapsed that ANC leadership in Tswani. It's him. Tswani, to be where it is today, is Sputa. South Africans, you are so gullible. So gullible that a person collapses a municipality. A municipality. You say he can restore such a complex matter as electricity. He himself said he doesn't know anything. He's relying on those people who have been there failing us. He made a confession. So why must I even ask for more power for him? For what? These solutions we are talking about require no new ministry. Firstly, we don't want a minister of electricity. We're fine. Take the electricity from public enterprise, put it in energy. That's where it's supposed to be. The, its policy direction and its businesses be run by one department and one minister. An energy department is not montage. That's the problem. That when you are talking about principle, you go, guys bring names. It's not montage. So, take it from and implement these solutions. So, it's a coordination, especially as come implementation, should not be far from policy. They should be together. And we have effective ministry that is overseeing ESCOM. ESCOM doesn't decide which minister we're listening to today, depending on personal relationships between whoever is running ESCOM and that minister. Let ESCOM be under one political leadership and political authority so that they know they have no option but to take this uh, political direction. So we don't support a, a minister uh, of electricity. He must go. Um, he's being paid a lot of money that we do not have. The government needs every little cent that we're wasting on Sputa, who's not going to help us with anything. He's not going to help us with anything. The appointment of the Minister of Electricity was actually bluffing. It was Ramaphosa trying to show us that he's doing something about electricity crisis when he was actually not doing anything. The biggest achievement Sputa has achieved since he arrived there was to go to all power stations. How can that be an achievement? That a minister was taking swaps Ajiga Jiga. Atwara the station. Dimu Maka Chale and the power station. Atabur power station. Are you? There's nothing he was doing except to tour stations. And then that becomes the biggest ANC victory. A minister of electricity has done something that no minister has ever done in a short space of time, and that is visiting power stations. After that visit, do we have electricity? No, the situation has is, is worsened. In the next two weeks, we have been warned, there's going to be darkness. We're almost at a point of grid collapse. It's a reality that South Africans must know, that we're heading to darkness and ANC politicians are continuing business as usual, as if we are not in a crisis. We are in a deep, deep, deep crisis. Cell phone networks will not work. Water, if, even if we have it, we won't receive it because it needs electricity. Nothing is going to function. We are heading for a disaster worse than what COVID was. No one will go to work. The dead will have to be buried the same day because there will not be fridges to keep them. 
No generator is meant to operate 24 hours. Generator is an intervention for a short while. Even those who have generators will not be saved from the mess we are going into. We want you. We went to the streets because we knew this was coming. History will absolve us. We were called names, were ridiculed, were insulted. Police and the army were called on us for trying to protect us from where we are. They are just calling, calling it stage 10 for... for and it's not going to be darkness of uh, 12 hours or 24 hours, it comes back. No. At times it's going to take three to four days. At times it will take a week. At times it will take a month without electricity. The whole leadership must, call, must go. We cannot uh, fall back and do nothing. And you know what is the problem? Even ANC leaders and ANC veterans themselves are saying we've never been in a crisis we find ourselves in now. But they are so helpless. So, Brian must come back. Brian must come back. Michelle Koko must come back. So is all those Indian, colored, white engineers. We are in a crisis. They must, they must not even, if they love this country, they must not ask for money, they must not ask for payment, they must come and rescue South Africa. Allegations were made against Brian. Allegations were made against Koko. Uh, uh, commission was uh, put in place. Useless commission in the history of our country. Where serious light was shed with the chairperson of the commission. Some information in relation to this uh, a mining company that Brian was speaking about, which later came to be confirmed that indeed it was paying bribes internationally. Glencoe. Glencoe. But did uh, uh, our favorite judge say anything about that? They never wanted Brian because Brian knew how to pile and pile and pile coal. And after piling, he turns against this uh, monopolist and say to them, this is my price, or you can go. They never liked him because they couldn't bully him around. When there were allegations of corruption and the Guptas, we all had a reason to say he must be investigated. Because So, he had to be investigated, asked questions and all of that. Mara, hey, we are heading for a crisis. And yeah, it's a man who can come and help us. Including that former CEO who came to present. Marocha must come back. This, all of these guys must come back and put their heads together and say, how do we save our country? There's no time now for profit uh, making. We call even on monopolies to just stop it because they are the ones who are pursuing these guys so that they can capture ESCOM and maximize profit. They must stop. They must just stop. It's not time to politic now. We are in a crisis. And everybody, I'm not saying Brian's charges must be dropped or anyone's charges must be dropped. They have not been found guilty. I'm not saying go and fetch them in jail. They are at home. I'm not saying drop their charges. Or, uh -uh. Continue with whatever you are doing with them. But bring them here to come and help us. We have a problem here. We have a problem. And can't you see 
as a country that we have a problem. And we listen to people who have two passports. People who, when we are in crisis, they are just going to leave easily and go to London and leave us in crisis here after we have gone against each other. We are so scared of these people so much that if they hate one of us, all of us, then go and hate one of our own. He, the man has got a skill. That's why when he went back to ESCOM, the, the workers were celebrating every corner because they knew that a man who can take us out of this trouble is this one. The capacity, the ability to take rational decisions that are in the best interest of our country. So, I must emphasize this. I'm not saying drop his charges. I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying anything. All I'm saying is we are in a crisis. A man is here with a skill. Can't we humble ourselves and go and ask him to come and help us with this crisis we're confronted with? That ambassador of the USA was supposed to be taken out of our country the following day. He insulted us. He violated uh, diplomatic protocols. That's why he was sanctioned. And then he started speaking in folk tongues and we didn't hear what he was saying. But a man who speaks like that in the name of diplomacy, you will immediately withdraw his credentials. That man's credentials were supposed to be withdrawn. There are lots of protocol channels that are established for those types of concerns. He could have utilized those channels to go and raise his concerns. But to create such atmosphere for our country, to create such doubt and smear our country in a manner he did, and he still hasn't come out to apologize. He says, no, maybe things were not put the way, maybe they were misunderstood. And, but we understood him. So, that's not the type of a guy, a guy we need. So, if there were guns that were given to Russia, it was a good thing. I would have done the same as a president of the republic. But I don't think these ones have got capacity, Shem. Unless you are talking Nobkiris and Spear and all those types of things. But real, real stuff. I don't know what is it that Russia doesn't have which came here to look for. But Russia must be given a practical support. Because when we needed one, they didn't give us a non-alignment position. They didn't give us this neutral nonsense position. They gave us arms. They gave us arms. That's how much we relate uh, with Russia. Uh, so I'm asking myself, who can sneak out the weapons in this country? And why didn't the DA or Freedom Front know? Because they are the ones who control all strategic uh, sectors of South Africa. In the armaments, white Afrikaner males are there. You can't take any armaments out of this country without them leaking such information with immediate effect and taking it pictures. Who, Tondi Mudiza is going to sneak out weapons with who? Helped by who? So Andre and Jamnandas, they deserve each other, Shem. They can bite each other anyhow they want. It's okay. But I'm happy that Andre is telling us what we've been telling you about Jamnandas. After establishing a rogue unit at SARS, he went to establish a rogue unit now at ESCOM. He said to Andre, you must find a way of doing this investigation. So that apartheid investigation that was not sanctioned procedurally, it's a replica of what happened at SARS. Everywhere he goes, he establishes rogue units. He went to establish a rogue unit of apartheid. 
generals who are not driven by anything but hatred of democratic dispensation. And they will do everything in their power uh, to undermine democratic dispensation. So, uh, 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 they are, there is some uh, uh, laziness, elite politics, palace politics that have uh, crept into the EFF uh, parliamentary uh, caucus and uh, legislatures and, and, and councils where people are no longer doing things the way we used to do things. The vibrancy of the EFF can no longer be felt. Um, uh, half the time, half the caucus is sick. When you ask for sick note, they all get sick note of the same date. So you can see that uh, why gets it? Uh, because uh, uh, we have said uh, let's leave this uh, to those who are assigned to deal with these things to lead them. Uh, but uh, we, we, have, we have experienced some level of deterioration. Uh, 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 some even bordering on members of the EFF certain committees being co-opted and aligned with ministers. As a result, they've never asked a minister a single question. They've never submitted a motion without notice. They've never released a single press statement about their department. So some may have to uh, be ex excused very soon from that responsibility uh, because we are not going to harbor uh, laziness. Um, it was a huge debate uh, uh, this weekend in the CCT that the vibrancy of the EFF can no longer be felt uh, in Parliament. Uh, uh, and therefore, this now invites us back uh, into Parliament uh, to go and make sure that we crack the whip <coughs> and people toe the line. Uh, it's not only in Parliament. Uh, in the um, uh, legislatures and councils, uh, and, and some other councils are worse because a councillor since the beginning of a year has never been to council, and nothing will happen to me because if anything happens to me, is dictatorship will not allow that nonsense. We'll rather be called dictators. We're not going to allow people to go to council, to go to legislature, to go to parliament to go and steal the money of the poor. They get paid for doing that work, and they must do it without fail. Uh, so so, so uh, that is in relation to uh, uh, EFF MPs. Uh, it's not a crisis point. It's at the beginning, and it must be nipped uh, just at the beginning so that we don't have people who exist amongst us as a revolutionaries and activists, only to find that actually we have been joined by uh, ANC envious. People who have been envying the ANC and wishing they can be where the ANC is and do nothing. We have a big problem with people who go on top and do nothing. That is one of the biggest problems with Ramaphosa. <coughs> Men on top doing nothing. So we don't allow such things uh, in the EFF. And we're transparent about it because it's called in the EFF constitution uh, constructive self-criticism. Thank you. I think I answered everything. Thank you, President. We're taking the second and final round. Uh, you'll be number one. You'll be number two. You'll be number three. Number four, going, going, gone. Number one. Thank you, CIC. Um, it's Peter Mulemani from Kai FM. Uh, indeed, crime is a, is a challenge. Uh, but what solutions does the EFF believe are suitable to fight crime in the country? I'll give an example, CIC. Um, 
we still see GBV, increasing incidence of GBV. Uh, recently, as have investigated um, uh, a Zamazama type of war in Primrose, and uh, the local police have told us, even the uh, Ekuleni Metropolis, that they are scared because uh, they are heavily armed, these Zamazamas, with uh, 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 AK 47 and automatic rifles. But what solutions do we have on that? Um, uh, I think you've answered this one. I wanted to know what, what do you see on load shedding as we likely to go uh, on higher, higher, higher stages. Uh, uh, but but the, the last part, I'm not sure it's going to be you, CIC, or it's going to be the Deputy President. Uh, the rent is still struggling following the Russian cargo ship, Lady R. How soon will the market reaction stabilize? Thank you. Number two. Good uh, my name is Shannon from Kasi Broadcasting. My, my question is, the CIC mentioned the small and yana meetings between councillors and businesses and so on. The, the question that somebody asked out there is now, okay, what is the formal process? Because you can criticize that process, so it's maybe just highlight what is the formal process for businesses to approach the EFF to support its initiatives, etc. Then uh, on, on coalitions, uh, the CIC has mentioned that uh, EFF is in no coalition with the ANC, but you know we in city of Joburg, uh, the JSE is around the corner. This is the economic hub of, of Africa. And city of Joba council is in a mess. The first councillor couldn't count uh, rent dollars; he was removed. The acting uh, first mayor, the current mayor, is accused of fraud and so on and so on. But now we have a acting uh, mayor that's a convicted uh, fraudster. So. If you're sitting as a business, what confidence do you have in City of Joburg? Just around the corner, Carlton Centre is on sale for 900 million. So all these things, as, as, as a business, how does the EFF see businesses coming to specifically South Africa, Africa, but, but Joburg as the economic hub? What's, what, 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 what can be done different now in the future besides load shedding? The council, city of Jova, the council is in a mess. Pickup trucks are missing, sewage are not uh, running in the streets. What confidence can the CIC or reassurance can the CIC give to businesses? And going to the event of the EFF, the, the launch uh, at FNB Stadium, we know previously it's on record. Businesses were told don't supply buses to the EFF. Well, how will EFF deal with that? Getting 100,000 people into the FNB stadium needs buses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number three. Number three. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is Decision uh, Exchange Yeah, mine was uh, just to a certain extent with the situation in the city of Joburg. What is your view on it? But I don't. I'm, I, I may have missed it when I was asked uh, uh, when I was asking the time frames in that private members' bill to have uh, the EFF withdraw. Thanks. Number four. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lungan Shomo. I'm from uh, Kasi FM Nebulin. So you see, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you to help us understand here. If you are saying there is no collusion between you and uh, the ANC, how is, going, how, how is this thing going to work? Because at first we were told that uh, these are light minded political parties coming together to form government. But later we saw the ANC making demands and they were saying these are demands before we are supporting that budget. These are the demands that we want um, to, to be respected. And it seems as if um, between like the ANC and the EFF in that region, they don't seem eye to eye, except that the national leadership and the provincial office are the one who seems to understand each other. So what is going to happen going forward? I'm going to see you guys form a, um, a, a management committee that will manage the collusion there in that, in that region. But secondly, the, the issue of uh, 
policy. We, we know that each and every political party bring their own policy within government. Uh, and, and perhaps the example can be understood that uh, uh, cleanup campaign. Some MMCs already are trying to incorporate that with their own internal uh, municipal uh, cleaning campaign. And it seems as if the ANC again has got a problem with that, accusing some of your MMC of smuggling your own party campaign within the municipality. How are you going to implement other policies such as insourcing of securities if such like a, a mass clean campaign is a problem and uh, you, your collision partner is viewing that as smuggling your own party campaign ahead of the 2024 elections? Uh, there's an additional question, President. I don't know if we must indulge it. Yeah, a newsroom Africa. Thank you for the indulgence. It's Govan again from Newsroom Africa. Mr. Malema, what did you think of the response to the price for the seat at the main table at the gala dinner? We noted that uh, you did respond to, to someone who, who was accusing the EFF of money laundering on social media. Thank you, President. Um, no, thank, thank you very much. No, the private member's bill, yes, I agree, I didn't answer to that one. The private member's bill is with immediate effect. Um, uh, the, the issue of the withdrawal from the ICC, it's very urgent, and uh, it's not something that can be delayed. Um, the ANC had put that uh, on the table, and then uh, after this conference, they withdrew it. Uh, uh, because they are cowardice. They don't know what they stand for. Uh, and then one morning they said they are for withdrawal. Then in the evening they said they are withdrawing the withdrawal. Um, uh, you know, uh, police uh, like um, uh, complaining. Uh, you know, if there is a Zamazama with automatic uh, rifles, in the police, there is what we call unit, uh, elite unit, units, uh, like um, a task force, uh, counter assault team, uh, and you name them. They don't need the army. So those units are meant for people who are dangerously armed. Then you leave ordinary police to invite those. So if police had interest of getting into the Zama-Zama areas and they are being undermined, they know which unit to call. And um, I'm not for any unit going to Zama-Zama uh, area and then being shot at. And then when they are shot at, the uh, uh, response with Rose is no. Anyone, not only Zama-Zamas, Anyone that becomes a dangerous criminal against the police, they must shoot to kill. Must not play with crime criminals who threaten police. Police are a state, and a state at no point must feel threatened by facts. When you carry a automatic rifle aimed for war, and you point that at the police, you have made an early application to meet your maker. It's as simple as that. So police have got no reason to complain about Zamazamas. Not at all. Um, 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 if Zamazamas are Zamazamaring there, they've got no guns, police come, they get out of the hole, they run and all of that, that's fine, there's no problem. But the day you take out a gun, you take out a rifle, you have signed your rights away. You have, the, those rights cease to exist. So we, di we, we don't need the army. We don't need the army. Uh, when there is an anticipated cash in transit haste and the police get to hear about it, those elite units are always released even before uh, and uh, they go and engage with, because in the cash in transit haste, we've got highly trained people, highly armed people, 
So you can't send ordinary pol police. Those units get unleashed to attend to those people. So police have got no reason. They must just do their work. And, and, and politicians must also do their work. A minister, uh, MEC must call upon a minister and say, there is a war zone here. I need your intervention. And that intervention can be made. I mean, they showed you during uh, shutdown how capable they are. They were demonstrating to you uh, with people who are not armed. They were showing you how, how dangerous they are to people who are not armed. Now their peers are there at Zama Zamas. I want to see something. Let them go there. Let that capacity they were showing to kids of vets at Hillbrook be shown to the Zama Zamas there. Because they were, they were shooting at kids scared of armed people. The markets must stabilize because the must, markets must stop uh, behaving in a manner they are behaving even in the absence of evidence. The guy hasn't produced anything. Even in the meeting where he met the leadership, he still doesn't say, but this is what I have. So which means I can just wake up tomorrow and say things and then the markets, uh, you know, take a turn. It can be. And that's why we're angry for that reason. He has, in a way, destabilized our markets and compromised our economy. And we can't agree to that. You want to meet MMCs, you make an appointment, you go and see them. They've got offices, they've got PAs, um, they've got cell phones, you can call them directly. They attend EFF meetings, they attend community meetings. You can approach them, I want to see you, I've got this type of uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, proposal, which I think will be good for the municipality in the social media, any form of communication, then they will process them and say, come see me at this office at this time. Uh, uh, I can make an allocation for an hour or 30 minutes, depending on the amount of time you need. Uh, not uh, uh, come see me at my house and then you are made to play with kids. The whole MMC, you must play with the kids of a businessman. Uh, take, take a picture, take a picture. Aye, those things, they are belittling. That, the next thing, you, that meeting get leaked that you are in some house. Because that's the problem with the Guptas. It's that thing of calling people to their houses. And then once they say you are from that house, we all conclude that you have eaten. And uh, in a true sense, you have eaten because everybody ate the curry there and Mbalula also ate the curry. So there's no one who didn't eat the curry. That's the problem of going to people's houses. Huh? Some people will give you samosas you don't, have, don't want. <laughs> Ramon diet, but no, this is good for diet. You eat things you're not supposed to eat. No, no, no. Don't go to people's houses. No. Let's meet in the office, not even restaurant. Office. Your work is at the office. Be as transparent as possible. That's all. That's all we're asking. Yeah, I mean, when we meet them officially, you can't meet them alone. The PA is there. Uh, the person responsible for this or that issue you want to meet me about is there. Because I'm a politician, I don't have those expertise. I must bring another ear which has got a sharp understanding of what you are talking about. Um, look, there is no uh, crisis that is created by the coalition government now in Johannesburg. The crisis comes from elections. Where? There was no decisiveness from our people. So, what must we do? Now, our people even elected Mapantiti to go in, into the council. What can you do? Ex-convicts were elected daylight. Now, Lepantiti once the elected 
to be in council. He meets the requirements of being a mayor. That's why that ex-prisoner is an acting mayor. Because he qualifies. Once he qualifies to be a councillor, he qualifies to be a, a, an a acting mayor or even a full mayor. Because I heard the other ex-prisoner was an ex-mayor there in some small dorpy. He thought he was going to be a celebrity. He realized the distance. Yes, this is too much. <laughs> he resigned and came back. And then when he comes back, he wants to disrupt Kane. <laughs> Eh? He thought those things of being a mayor is a child's play. Ah. So, you created the crisis. South Africans created a crisis they must solve in 2024. We work with what we have. You have given us ex-prisoners. In Johannesburg, it's worse. Because you cannot do anything without those ex-prisoners. Both sides. But to show the hypocrisy of South Africans, when the ex-convicts -conv work with DA, you don't say, hey, the ex-convicts, this ex-convicts, that. Mapantiti, you only remind us of them when they come to work with us. But when they work with DA, no one says, why is DA working with the ex-convicts? So, no EFF went to Sun City uh, or Hoshimampur to go and fetch a prisoner and made it a councillor and made it a, a acting mayor. It is the people of Johannesburg who took ex-convicts and elected them into council. And then you said to us, work with them. We are working with what we have. That's what coalition means. It's not an EFF problem. It's a problem we found and we are trying to navigate to save this beautiful city of Johannesburg. Go and raid our MMCs. Go and raid them. There's no one here who came to this press conference or who left home mo this morning and never met a, 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 a JMPD a stop and go. They are everywhere. He makes them to work to a point where they even do cleanup campaign, which is not part of their mandate. But he makes them go beyond the call of duty for the sake of our people. Those are the types of MMCs we want in the EFF. You want to judge us in Johannesburg? Go and look at our MMCs and what they are doing. We are not responsible for Mampantid. And we must not be asked about Bankayas here. Prisoners, number, number. We don't know those things. So, we never appointed any bankaya, prisoner, convicts into being a mayor or into a council. None of our members in the Johannesburg Council is an ex-convict. We have a PhD, MMC. We've got a senior nurse, MMC. Ask us about that. Not number 26 and number 28 and number 27. We don't know those things. We are not responsible for such things. Buses, stadium is going to be full to capacity. You know, the EFF people, when you talk, they, they don't listen sometimes. During the shutdown, we said to them, go and talk to the taxi associations. Befriend taxi associations so that you don't find each other fighting. The next thing I hear, hey, in Captain Park, taxi associations are shooting the EFF. But in Polokwan, I hear the taxi associations have stopped all taxis. Three, four taxis tried to, to drive. They, after they dropped people, they came back. The taxi association stopped those taxis, took the money from them, went to buy fighters food with the money they took from those taxis that were driving after they were told not to drive. That's how much good relationship we have with taxi associations. So if people are not going to create relations where they come from with taxi associations and avoid provincial and national structures that operate in department offices, Go to ordinary taxi owners 
on the ground and talk to them and leave embedded polit uh, uh, politicians masquerading as leaders of associations. Let's go and talk to Texas on the ground so that this eventuality, if they stop buses, no one can stop Texas. The Texas will always uh, 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 give our people transport to go to the stadium. But no maganjani, FNB will be full to capacity. No amount of sabotage will sabotage FNB on the 29th of uh, July. I mean, the Masinia approach says uh, the EFF wants to use uh, uh, the tracks of the municipality to achieve uh, their EFF political program. Let's leave the EFF political program. Leave it. You can even remove the name Andris Tatan. But why would you vote against a motion that says let's go and clean illegal uh, dumping sites? I mean, I saw CD, the journalist celebrating that. I was like, is that how much she's obsessed with dirtiness? That she doesn't want drugs to go and clean up illegal dumping sites? How dirty can you be to protect uh, not cleaning? So, we are going to clean. We don't need uh, trucks of Ikurlen. We have cleaned Ikurlen before the, without the trucks of the municipality. The ANC objects cleaning black people's townships. A journalist celebrate that. How do you call that? That's how much we have become so rotten that we are prepared to tolerate dirtiness, illegal dumping rubbish in front of our mother's houses. You must ask those journalists who have been with us in the Andres Tatani cleanup campaign. If you have been there and someone says trucks must not be taken out to go and clean, You'll, you'll be personally hurt. Because immediately when we finish cleaning and restarting, the amount of fresh air that kicks in immediately, the amount of grannies who come out of their yards just to say, thank you, my son. We have never seen this in the past 10 years. This thing has been like this. Someone sees comfortably an object, a campaign that says at least once a week let's go and clean after our people. And a journalist tweet proudly, no track of the municipality is going to clean after a political uh, campaign, clean up campaign in the townships. We are going to put our insourcing motions if they object, they must object. And the people will know that the ANC objects to insourcing of cleaners and security guards. We don't have to uh, uh, be in agreement with the ANC on issues that affect our people. We don't have to sign anywhere with anyone. We just have to agree. This one, we put politics aside. We are going to clean. This one, we are putting politics aside. We are going to insource. This one, we are putting politics aside. We are going to fix a sewer system. We are going to fix in a city. You must listen to an ANC person justifying why inner city can be clean. He says, uh, uh, the inner city, uh, pick it up, has met its target. They've given us a report. That, I don't care if they've met the target. What do you mean? What target is that? Go to North Texas rank. At the entrance of North Texas rank, there is a pile at the entrance. So what, what uh, target are you talking about? I don't understand why the CEO, if there is any, of Pick It Up is still the CEO. With this town being so dirty, I told the uh, uh, Premier Lusuf, I said, let's take a walk in the inner city. 
Let's take a walk. You won't be proud. And those lazy thinkers will say, no, it's foreigners, it's Nigerians, it's all of that. I don't care who that person is. Let's clean our city. Let's go and clean Johannesburg. And I don't care if that is cleaned by ANC or is cleaned by uh, DA or Action SA. Once a motion is put there, but they say clean up campaign Saturday, all councillors. You will see all councillors of the EFF there. And not only councillors of the EFF, we will also join. Where have you ever seen Cyril Ramaphosa cleaning? Cleaning to, to show his caring side. The only time we saw him trying to do something for the benefit of the community is when he was patching a pothole on a gravel road. Cleaning after our communities must not even be something that comes as a wow. It must be a norm. It must be a daily thing. It must be something, if we say we are leaders and we love our people, it must just come from a good heart. Uh, my table has been sold for 1.2 million, say. And then we, it, actually it was sold uh, to more than five people. Having observed that, we are now auctioning it. That five of you have bought one table for 1.2 million. You must now bid for it. Those are the people who are not scared of the establishment. Those are the people who are not scared of the Oppenheimers. Because the Oppenheimers in this country are the ones who determine who gets the money, which political party gets the money, which political party doesn't get the money. That's why they openly finance DA and finance uh, Action SA, but no one can ever say anything uh, uh, about them. But anyone who finances the EFF is going to be called a money launderer. That friend of yours who said, Julius is a money launderer, I said to him, take me so that I can teach you a lesson. He went for a cover. I'm not a money launderer. We want more money. Put more money. Our track record has demonstrated that the little we have as the EFF, we share it with those who do not have. No political party in South Africa not a single one, has built more houses from its coffers for the poor than the EFF. Not even the ANC. We're not talking government. A political party. No single political party has sent so many kids to school. So many kids to school than the EFF. So when you give to the EFF, you must know you are giving to a party that shares with the poor of the poorest. South Africans, you must ask yourself a question. Why, when I give my 10 rand to the EFF, it's a concern of another person? Because when they donate to their parties, you never say anything yourself. Ramaphosa sells tables every year in the dinner before the January 8th of the ANC, we have never seen such amount of noise. It is not about the money. It's about stopping the revolution because if you finance the EFF, you are financing the revolution. They are scared of an EFF with money. I mean, this EFF without money can do so much. So much. These political parties have been around for so many years. Before the EFF, they've got no office they can call their own office, a building. You remain a boy. All you do, drunkard. So we are not drunkards in the EFF. Every little penny gets accounted for. That's why we can afford to build 
this office. Buy it and beautify it. So we call upon all South Africans to donate as many millions as possible to the EFF. As many millions as possible to the EFF and see what we'll do with that money. Already we got groceries. We are going to cook, by the way, at the FNB Stadium. Yeah, we are going to cook. We, 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 are, we are now raising 100 cows. So we are going to slaughter and cook. Already we have collected 45. And by the way, we've got a farm. When you are bored, you can make a tent there with a camera to see the cows. They are there. And many more people are calling. Now, I will give you guys one. Uh, just send transport. Why? We are an organization of the people. We will never struggle when the people are there. We really appreciate as little as 10 rand that you have donated. Please keep it coming. Those of you who want to buy merchandise of the EFF as part of your contribution, go online, buy the merchandise of the EFF. It's not just buying. We don't sell. It's a contribution to sustain your organization so that your organization is not mortgaged by white monopoly capital and give it a, a new direction. DA is not directed by the Oppenheimers. They own it. They formed it. They own it. The same. I mean, Mashaba doesn't hate the EFF. I think the things he say, Shem, about the EFF of late, they hate him personally. Because the guy loves the EFF. He believes in the EFF. Everything is, he does, he, he, he wants to be like EFF leaders. So, the problem is Oppenheimer's. That Rob Hassoff. Imagine, you 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 get addressed by Hassoff, or on Facebook like a small boy. Um, uh, man, I'm very happy. I'm very happy, man. Uh, 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 Gaten told me, you and Gaten, Gaten just called me. You know, you are doing a good job. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, man. No white man can say that about me. Me. A white man comes in the morning to, to record himself. To, to, so he can feel good. To feel good. He talks about me like that because I took his money. I've not taken any white man's money. That's why no white man will ever speak about me like a small boy. Amen? Hey, Get him? Uh -uh. No white man will ever do that to me. Never. Because I am being controlled by the masses on the ground who are voters and members of the EFF. So this initi initiative seeks to save the EFF from being hijacked and given a wrong direction. We don't have a problem with white people. They are more than welcome. I'm even considering starting to do white people sports, you know, cycling, things like that. <laughs> I have no problem, but, but eh? and swimming. Eh? That one of swimming, it can be a, eh? it can be a bit uh, challenging. We have no problem with white people. Let, let's let's. Let's engage from a respectful point of view. Don't treat me like a boy. Don't address me like a boy. If you are giving the EFF money, it means you must address me like a boy. You can take your money. We don't want it. Everyone who donates to the EFF, including black capital, by the way, black people, no one can donate to the EFF and take a phone and speak the way that Rob was speaking about Hemen 
and uh, gate 10. What are their children saying? If another man addresses your father like that, given the history of this country, so disrespectful, no one can ever say that about the EFF. When we speak here, what we read here has never been exchanged with any white man or a black man, where's anyone rich? If all of them want to hear what we're going to say, they all get it here. No one gets a privilege because we are not in anyone's pocket. We are not owned by anyone. That's why we are calling on the ground forces, the motive forces of the revolution to guard their own revolution by financing their own revolution. As little as 10 rand is welcomed. It is that 10 rand which will make 29 July a red festival of the poor and a rally that will never be forgotten in the history of politics in South Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much, President. Uh, that concludes the EFF press briefing. Thank you very much.